Please give her a very warm welcome. Kim, everybody. Okay. So when you're a bartender on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, you, you try to, that's right, you try to live your life by this kind of unwritten bartender code. Number one is you don't get drunk behind the bar. You have a couple of whiskeys to kind of get you through the night, but you don't appear drunk. Number two is you don't have sex with patrons. You have secret sex with patrons. <laughs> and at number three, this is the most important, you do not have sexual fantasies about your married coworker. That's from me personally. I was one of a trio of bartenders at a really famous uh, pub on the Upper East Side. There was me, I was the only chick that worked at this bar. There was Mickey, he was the off the boat Irishman who was super charming. And then there was Jimmy. Jimmy was your quintessential New York bartender. He was moody, he was angry. He had a masters in Marxist theory. Um, and he was so sexy. He was also so married. And the thing is, is I respect the bounds of, of marriage, okay? I wasn't gonna try anything. I wasn't hopefully going to let him try anything. I was just gonna let it be and soak in that adorable cute butt behind the bar. So I'm working there about a month and Jimmy walks in, he gets his coffee, he comes behind the bar and he says, hey kid, what's up? Gives me a kiss on the cheek and then looks to me for the very simple answer. And right then and there it occurs to me that I've had the dirtiest dream about him the <laughs> night before. The thing is, is my brain plays this little trick on me. It likes to have like dreams of a sexual nature about people in my life, but it doesn't like me to know it until I'm looking at them in the eye the next day. <laughs> So I look at Jimmy, I can't talk, I'm blushing and I look down the whole night because here's what's going through my head. It's late at night after a long night at the bar. We're popping two Amstel lights because that's Jimmy's favorite beer. <laughs> he, says, he says to me, hey kid, come on downstairs, I gotta show you something in the keg room. We go down the stairs, I'm looking at his fabulous butt, guys, fabulous. As we're going down the stairs, we get into the, the keg room, I go, brr, it's cold in here. <laughs> and he goes, oh, let me warm you up. And he slams me against the wall and we boink like bunnies, all right? Uh, and the thing with sexual dreams with me is I tend to get bored as I do with men in life, so eventually I will just forget about it. But the thing is, is this is Jimmy. He's beautiful and I see him every damn week. So the dream kind of becomes part of my like repertory of sexual dreams. If I'm being completely honest guys, it's like the top five. Like one of the best, like get my engines revving. Maybe it's a cold winter night and I am home alone and I just need some fun. I have this dream about Jimmy. So let's fast forward like four years. Jimmy and I have been working together for a long time. He is my brother in arms behind the bar, right? He's the guy that protects me from huge dudes. We drink Jameson together. It's great. And yeah, okay, once in a while I have this dream about him, but he's married. He's just had this kid that is wonderful. It's great. And then one night, after a particularly long night behind the bar, you know, uh, Jim's like, hey, let's grab a couple of drinks and like sit down and just relax. And I say, great, and I grab two Amstels because now it's my favorite <laughs> beer. And we start drinking and he goes, hey, while you're here, why don't you come on down to the keg room? I have something I wanna show you. <laughs> it takes two steps for me to go, holy hell, this is gonna happen. It's not just, a dream anymore, I am a sex psychic, I am a magician, I can make my sexual fantasies happen, people. And this is what's going on in my head as we're walking down the stairs, I'm going through the checklist of like, did I shave last night, am I ready for this? And we, we get down into the keg room and I'm going with script, right? So I go, brr, it's cold in here. <laughs> And Jim goes, yeah, Kim, it's a refrigerated keg room. It's gonna be cold in here. And I've kind of like turned so that my back is now up almost against the wall where I am ready to have sex with him. And, he, and I don't even care that he's married because it's gonna happen. 
And uh, he turns and he goes, Kim, check it out. I've changed the Guinness topper for you so that it's easier to pour because I know how hard it was for you to deal with the Guinness. <laughs> and I go, yeah, thanks, Jim. That's really great. And I kind of turn around and run up the stairs because I'm mortified that he doesn't know that I've been dreaming about him naked for four years. And I drink my beer really fast and I leave. And that's where this rule comes from, right, guys? But here's the thing. I live in L.A. now. So there's an addendum to my barcode of life, which is this, okay? You cannot have sexual fantasies about your married coworker. But when you're 3,000 miles away, you sure as shit can have sexual fantasies about your ex coworker, guys, because there is no rule about that. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> nice job, Kim. Let her hear it. <laughs> 